Hey, I'm Dr. Rivera. I am an emergency medicine doc and assistant professor out at Stanford. I'm the founder and CEO of Simex. So we'll tell you a little bit about that. We are the first and largest producer of virtual reality medical simulation software. And really the benefits here um, are twofold, I think. One, virtual reality helps you sim a lot more realistically. And two, it helps you sim a lot more often. Right? So there's a lot of things in traditional sim that are pretty hard to portray. Things like rashes, strokes, psychosocial interactions where the patient's crying on your shoulder. Um, and also environmental complexity and some of the interprofessional and team-based training can be tricky as well. Um, so VR helps you resolve a lot of those problems. Your patient's a lot more flexible. They can be a baby or a grandmother. They can be vomiting. They can be missing limbs. You can have three of them at once. And then, you know, the real benefit, though, is the fact that, you know, in traditional sim, you need your mannequin, you need a bed to put them on, you need a defibrillator, a patient monitor, you might need, you know, a fake EMR system that you build, a whole sim center, really. But with VR, all you need is a couple headsets that you can get at Costco for $2.99, an empty space, and you can stand up a sim center anywhere in less than five minutes. So that is really the benefit. Sim anytime, anything, anytime, anywhere for cheaper, for about a tenth the cost of traditional sim. So here you see them already engaging in a simulation. And in fact, you're, this is really exemplifying a couple of the unique things about the SimX platform specifically. One is that, as you can see, we've got two people working in the same space at the same time and everything is lined up. So they can high five in VR and they'll high five in real life. That's something that is unique to our platform. Two is that you're seeing, they're doing actually a very high complexity simulation with fully functioning tools here. So you've got one participant who is analyzing the EMR, one that is navigating the syringe pumps, hanging some normal saline. And in this scenario, as I recall, what they're doing actually is analyzing a patient who has come in with chest pain. And you, know, you can see they're doing it just like they do it in real life. They're not navigating drop-down menus. They're not hitting buttons. If you want to talk to a patient, you just talk to them. If you want to listen with a stethoscope, you go over, pick it up, and put it on their chest. If you want to navigate the EMR, you go through it, and you go look at the MAR, and you look at their past medical history. Again, just like you would in real life. That is a really important part of our philosophy for how we implement VR um, in the medical simulation space, really trying to do it holodeck style and give your reps on real life encounters. I think he's in cardiac arrest. Now we'll give it a couple minutes and let them continue to navigate this scenario. I'll get the pads. Get, get the pads. Get, 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 get. Hand me the pads. Okay, starting CPR. Right. You, get a, you get some epi for him. All right, Open the, the crash cart. Now you can see how the multiplayer aspect of this really opens up possibilities for interprofessional training and education. This particular simulation is designed to allow you to put a doctor, a nurse, a respiratory therapist, a tech, all in a simulation together, and they can all perform their various roles. And you can see they're practicing not just the medicine here, but they're practicing the communication, okay. right? And the, the, the closed loop communication, the coordination of roles, the switching in and out of chest compressions, all of that, that's such an important part of running intense resuscitations. Um, and you can practice that just alongside the medicine here. TPA is running, thank you. Now one thing you'll notice here is he is actually feeling the pulses and this is what you do in a real life resuscitation generally if you're captaining it, you're sitting there with your finger on the femoral pulse making sure that people are doing adequate compressions and that works here in Simex just like it does in real life actually. If those compressions are adequate, he's going to feel that in the pulse through a vibration through this hand controller which will vibrate with no the right pulse. speed and strength to reflect no the heart rate and the blood pressure. No, no pulse right no now. No pulse. Okay, resume CPR. Resume. You giving another amp of epi? Yes, please. Epi in. Now, one of the other things you'll notice here is we don't have to be in a headset to see what's going on in VR. Actually, through our proprietary system, you can broadcast the first person perspective of any participant to any HDMI compatible television. And this allows you to do what we do in traditional sim, right? Where I, as the educator, can help kind of prompt them, give them hints if I want to, but also all of the other students who aren't participating in this sim can still observe and you know, learn from that experience.
All right, well, thanks so much um, for visiting the booth here. Again, this is Simex VR. We make virtual reality medical simulation software for EMS personnel, nurses, and physicians. Over 290 scenarios you know, across a wide continuum. Feel free to check us out at simexvr.com.